Now we're going to do some text formatting, and I'm going to build a simple postcard layout. So I'll do File, New Document, and I'll make the width 6, and press Tab once to jump down to Height. Without clicking anywhere, I just type 4, and it wipes out that value. And I could keep pressing Tab, or I could just drag across the top margin of 1 inch and type 0.25. I want quarter inch margins. When I press tab, I'll see I get quarter inch on all four sides. And if you aren't seeing bleed and slug, you can hit fewer options and more options. More options, if it's available, will show me bleed and slug, and I always do an eighth of an inch bleed, but check with your print shop, and a one inch slug for job specific notes. I think I'll also make this two columns. And I'll do a gutter, or the space between columns, of 0.25. And I'll hit Save Preset and call this 6 by 4 Postcard. And when I click OK, now I have that as a preset that I can select quickly to whip up new postcards. And I'll click OK. To format text with InDesign, you first need to go to the Type tool and draw an area for the text to go into. And if you look at my cursor, technically this is called an eye beam because the cursor itself looks like the letter I. The reason I mention that is because you don't want to start drawing the text box with the cursor directly on your pink margin guide at the bottom or with the cursor, the top of the eye, here on the top of the pink margin guide. You want to look for that little horizontal line just above the bottom of the eye, just as I'm doing now. That is the hot spot for this cursor. Every tool that uses a cursor has a hot spot, and that little horizontal line marks the baseline of the type. And I'll show you what baseline is in case you don't know. But once that little horizontal line is here, I will click and drag to create an area for the cover of my postcard to type. And I'll let go and I get a flashing cursor. Now I have a text frame that I could type into. Unlike Illustrator or Photoshop, I can't just click once and get a text frame to type. I do have to click and drag to make it the size that I want it. And I didn't fill up this whole column. It's okay if you don't. We'll be moving this text frame around. That's one of the benefits of using InDesign. Every frame can be picked up and moved anywhere you'd like it. And we're going to type one of my favorite quotes. We don't see things as they are, comma, and I'll hit return or enter to do a second line. We see things as we are. And then return or enter, and I'll add a sad little hyphen, but I'll be fixing that later. And this is by Unnaise. A-N-A-I-S, NIN. And I do have on Edit, Spelling, Dynamic Spelling. So that's why I'm getting the green here for case sensitivity. Because I started a new line with a lowercase character, InDesign is warning me that that should be uppercase. But I'm going to let it go for now. And these two words are not in the dictionary, Unnaiz and NIN. And if it's something I type frequently, I might want to right-click and add NIN to my dictionary. Click once in this word and right click and add a nice to my dictionary. But let's format this type. I'll do edit, select all, and there's three different ways, probably even more, to change your font. The first is type and font. And when you choose type and font, you could see in the word sample what the font looks like. The second way is clicking this arrow and choosing your font. And again, you'll see the word sample in its style. And the third way is this character panel. But I virtually never use the character panel because everything that's in the character panel is in the control panel, this bar across the top. So I'm going to rip off character by grabbing the word character and close it. That way I have more room for valuable panels here on the right. So let me show you a trick. 
In InDesign, if you click in the word Minion Pro, not on the arrow to the right, but anywhere on the default font, you could simply hit your up arrow key on your keyboard and go alphabetically through every font on your system. This works in Photoshop, and in fact, it did not work in Illustrator CS5 and older, but it now works in Illustrator CS6. Thank you to the Illustrator team. So in Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign on both Mac and Windows, click in your font name and hit your up and down arrow key to see it dynamically apply to the selected text. I'm going to go with a font that ships with InDesign out of the box that looks like a typewriter, and that is Prestige Elite. I have a lot of fonts installed. You will not have the same selection. I tend to buy a lot of fonts. There we go. And a faster way to get to Prestige Elite is I could click where the font name was and hit the letter P to get closer to it. But here I'm on Prestige Elite Standard, and the only flavor or weight I have installed is bold. When you purchase fonts, they usually come in families, and the families often include bold, italic, bold italic, and regular. If I choose one of the default fonts like Myriad Pro or Minion Pro, and in fact, I'll do that the quicker way. I'll highlight here, MY, R. As soon as I hit the R and the word gets long enough, now I'm on Myriad Pro, and I can hit Return or Enter to accept it. But Myriad Pro has many different flavors. In fact, you may not have all of these, but most of them ship with InDesign or with the Creative Suite. So we have regular, italic, semi-bold, and so on. A very important note, InDesign has no fake bold and no fake italic, because when you output this to a plate setting machine or to film for a printing press, Fake bolds and italics may often disappear if you don't have the proper printer font installed. So by choosing something like Prestige Elite and having only bold available, if I want other weights of that font, I would have to buy them. But this guarantees that my bolds will not disappear and my italics will not disappear when it leaves my computer. In programs like Microsoft Word or other page layout programs, when you hit the fake bold or fake italic button, it might disappear when it leaves your computer if you don't collect the proper fonts with the job. So for that reason, Adobe kindly removed the bold and italic that was fake, and they only let you choose it if you have a true font installed. As I work my way across, I have the size here, and I can use my up arrows or down arrows to increase it, or that power user trick of clicking on the number and on my keyboard hitting my down arrow key or up arrow key. That works in every Adobe program in most of the dialogues. Letting or line spacing is below. The term letting actually came from the days of metal type where they would put a piece of lead in between the lines. So if I hit my up arrow, there you can see I'm getting more line spacing or my down arrow, it's getting tighter. And now is a good spot to explain that little guide, the little horizontal line above the bottom of the I-beam that you see here. That marks the baseline. If I go to my selection tool and I draw a guide down to the bottom of the meat of the characters, not including descenders, the bottom of Ys or Gs or Ps, letting is measured from baseline to baseline. And I can't get this perfect, so sometimes zooming in with Command Plus or Control Plus or from your View menu, Zoom In will help. But as I look at this type and double click to get back inside, I have nine points for the height of these characters. And from this cyan guide to this cyan guide is 10 points. 10 points is the letting, and this is the baseline the bottom of the meat of the characters. If I highlight a nice thin, I can make that all caps or small caps. If I highlight this sad little hyphen, I can replace this with something higher end under the type menu, insert special character, hyphens and dashes, and use the high end typographically pleasing end dash. The widest dash. 
the letter M is roughly the widest character in our character set, so an M dash would be the widest dash you could do. There's also type insert special character hyphens and dashes N dash, which is the width of the letter N, and then here is the regular little hyphen. So for different fonts, these may look different widths, but those are the three types of dashes that you could choose. I'll highlight and delete the others. And this is your introduction to text formatting, to creating a new document, drawing a text box, changing your font and style, changing your size and letting or line spacing, and feel free to play with the other settings across the top of your screen, located in this control panel.